Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here again, and uh, this is my second video on inverse derivative of inverse functions. So I want to take a look at, you know, just a couple of other ones that might come up um, that are interesting for these inverse functions. One thing you need to know, though, is when when we have an inverse, uh, if if uh, if a function f has an inverse function, then f is called one to one, which means that it passes what we call a horizontal line test, meaning that it only will cross a horizontal line once. And it's either going to be strictly increasing or st strictly decreasing. So we call that monotonic. Um, we can use f prime to find out if f is always increasing or always decreasing, which would tell us, in fact, that it's one to one, right? So let's go ahead and, and do this for a here. Um, so we'll use f prime to show that f of x equals 6x minus x cubed is not one to one on its entire domain. So what we're trying to do is show that it is not monotonic, right? Because a one-to-one -one function is going to be monotonic, meaning always increasing or always decreasing. All right, so let's take a derivative. So we'll take the derivative, and we'll set it equal to 0. And I'll factor out a 3, and I'll get x equals plus or minus root 2. And those are my critical numbers. So then I'm going to check this out on a number line. And when I plug these in, I'm going to get negative, positive, and negative. So it's going to decrease, increase, and decrease. So already we know that it's not monotonic, right? Right. It would have to always increase. So we just say, you know, by this, f is not one-to-one. -one. Pretty simple, right? Um, so we're just trying to show that the, the, der it, the derivative doesn't always increase or always decrease. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Uh, find the largest interval containing x equals 0 for which f is 1 to 1. So where on this function containing x equals 0 is the function 1 to 1? Well, um, 0 is right here, right? This is where 0 is. And so between here and here, I'm going to have increasing. So my interval is going to be negative 2, sorry, negative root 2 to positive root 2. And that's it. So it's always increasing in that interval. That's it, right? So find the largest interval containing x equals negative 2 for which f has an inverse. Well, remember that if f is 1 to 1, then f has an inverse. So where is f 1 to 1 such that x is equal to negative 2? Well, negative 2 is right there. There's negative 2. So right in that interval is exactly where we have a monotonic function, which is always decreasing between negative 2, um, well, between negative infinity, between negative infinity and negative root 2. So negative infinity, oh, wow, that was a horrible infinity. There we go. And negative square root 2. All right. So that interval right there is where we have an inverse function um, in that interval only, or in the, you know, where it contains x equals negative 2. Otherwise, it's not monotonic, not 1 to 1. All right? So there's another example of where we might see um, uh, the inverse functions, where we need to use the derivatives and talk about inverse functions. Remember, though, I was just looking at my notes here. Um, remember that most of these inverse type derivative inverse function problems will generally come down to you just making a little table that has the points and the image points on your f inverse function and then finding the slope basically understanding that the slope are reciprocals that's it if you can remember that the slopes are reciprocals and you can make those image points you're golden all right we'll see you later guys bye bye